Okay, everybody, OCD Mikey here uh, with another little learning lesson for you guys about amplifiers. Here we have a legendary Krell from back when Krell was the shit. They are no longer what they once were, same as Macintosh, same as many other brands. But back in the day, Krell was the bomb. They were the top. They were kicking ass. And there was a couple other companies with them. Um, but they were definitely in the top, uh, one of the leaders. We're looking at a KSA 150, probably about 30 years old, maybe more. Thir I think about 30 years old. Um, and uh, we're weighing in at about 95 pounds. I've got this thing on a shipping scale right here. Um, let me show you some more. Hold on. Okay, so here is uh, the inside of this amplifier. Um, and uh, so just in case you guys don't know how circuits are laid out, amplifiers are pretty simple. There's heat sinks to take the, the heat away from the output devices or the transistors. Um, the what you're looking at here, this is a very typical amplifier layout. Left channel, right channel, heat sinks for the right channel, heat sinks for the left channel. Um, all the output devices and the output, the whole amplifier board is right here on one board. It's the whole amplifier. And then the amplifier board for the right side right here. Then this is the power supply. This is the main power transformer. Filter caps are underneath there. So every basic amplifier since, you know, 40 years ago is going to be the same exact design over and over regurgitated a million different ways. But the fact remains the same. You've got one amp board here, the other channel there. You've got a power supply in the middle and you've got heat sinks to take the heat away. OK, your first indication with heat sinks this big this thing could be potentially Class A, and it probably is Class A. It is. We know that. But I'm saying if you don't know anything about an amp and you see uh, heat sinks like this, it's probably a good indication that it's Class A. If it has little fins, a whole bunch of little fins in a row, and they tell you it's Class A and the fins are only this long and there's just a little space between them, probably not Class A. Class A needs this kind of a heat sink. It can't just take those little ass heat sinks. So they're probably full of it if, if, you're, if you're seeing that an amp with little heat sinks is being called class a so this is 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 um is consistent with the class a design we also know that old krells are class a um so um and and the first thing we get in here and this is to compare to any amp that you might look at even nowadays this is why i say the amps that are out that are class a class a b are no different than the ones that were made 30 years ago this thing sells for 2000 bucks on the used market it's made in usa and this thing is a diehard tank okay it's a power amp it has no moving parts so it doesn't matter man it either works or it doesn't um and so it's not like a cd player it's not like something where there's moving parts inside there's no tubes in here there's no um it is just a solid state amplifier device okay so the first thing you're going to notice we have a massive toroid okay so this thing goes down i mean it's it, it, if you can look at that it, it is a massive toroid this thing alone and it's not only is it a massive toroid it's steel encapsulated so listen do you hear any ring on that you hear any tang tang no not at all because it's encapsulated it's potted and it's filled with a giant transformer a five inch height and we've got a six and a half inch diameter so that gives you an idea of the size of this piece so that is something you absolutely won't find uh you will rarely find in uh amps uh of today is something that's this expensive a huge potted in steel uh toroidal transformer of that magnitude um rare that that's found okay the next thing you won't find are bus bars like this connecting the boards normally they're just wires you have wire jumpers these are huge old bus bars copper bus bars that attach to the outputs if we go to the back and we'll go to the back here of the amplifier we can see where the bus bars are on the output, too, of this design. This is the output. This goes to the back of the binding post. On both these sides, clearly, these binding posts need to be replaced. They broke after time because they're cheap pieces of crap, but I will replace those. Um, so you can see, see those bus bars? Those are all the outputs, okay? Only kick-ass, real powerful, high-current amps have bus bars on their outputs. Other amps will just have wires going to the output uh, binding post. But this has bolts and, and, and big old, you could weld with this thing, okay? Um, this is arc welding time, okay? And then the next thing that you won't see 
on your little bargain amplifiers or even the ones that are everybody is so popular. Oh, what do they say? The um, you know, um, I'm going to say some names and piss some people off, but I don't care. Uh, uh, Hagel and stuff like that. Ooh, a new Hagel. It's so amazing. It's a big amp. Well, does it have uh, does it have filter caps that are bigger than than soda cans? These are nearly coffee cans. Um, they are. They are, that's a two and a half or three inch diameter, and they are also about five inches tall. You are not going to find capacitors like this. These are 40,000 UF and 100 volt DC. Um, so these things are massive. They are, they are massive, and there's four of those. You will not get capacitors. They like to line up a whole bunch of little ones to save, and, and, and I'm telling you, a bunch of little ones does not sound as good as the big ones. The big ones always sound better, regardless. Even you can say, oh, it's a quicker, faster with the smaller ones. It doesn't matter. The big ones sound better. That's why the biggest, best sounding amplifiers are freaking huge because they use big, giant coffee can uh, 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 capacitors like this. Okay, it's the only way you're going to get that sonic. And any of your new amps are not going to have th these kind of caps in there unless it's something giant like a Playback Designs SPA-8 or a Boulder or some monster, you know, Griffin or something like that, those kind of amps. But you know what? Those amps are $80,000, $100,000, $200,000. Um, this is $2,000, okay? So there is no better value than to get something like a used um, amp, such as this Krell from back in the day, where you get all these characteristics of a big, giant, you know, $50,000 plus amplifier that you simply can't get for under ten grand. I mean, I don't see stuff like this in anything under the big mega amps. You know, people like to show off the, these amps that are twenty grand, and they're they're these these cheap things, man. I look at them and I'm like, cheap. I look inside and I'm like, what a pos. It ha doesn't even have a big. It doesn't have a big transformer. It doesn't have giant filter caps. It's just got little puny ass power supply, whatever. Um, and and it's just not going to do what these old amps can do. Now there are some amps that are still built to incredibly high standards. So if you open up some of these amps, let's open up some of these Class A Bs and let's look at them and see how close to this this looks. This is technology from 30 years ago. Okay, let's see if the amps of now, if they look any different. If I open a Jeff Rowland like I did before and you guys saw, it looks totally different than this. Nowhere even close. In fact, I'm going to show you the difference between old ass technology like this is. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just old. Okay, which means it's not worth a premium. Okay, so this is old technology. There's been no innovation in this regard to have an amp layout that has two boards with heat sinks clamped to the heat sinks, a power supply in the middle with the toroid and filter caps. This is a basic amp design that's been around for 35 years. Nothing's changed. So when you look inside some of these, so when you look inside some of these uh, Diagostinos and things like that, this is what's inside, okay? It's not much different. So there is no innovation other than a pretty box, and that's what I'm talking about, the pretty box syndrome. If you want to pay for a pretty box, all the power to you, okay? But there's no innovation in it to make it worth $100,000, $200,000, that I can see. It all looks like the same like this, just a little bit newer, but it's the same basic layout, same basic idea, okay? So hold on, let me show you what an amp that is advanced it looks like hold on okay so we're behind my big speakers now with my amp stack this is three channels of amplification we can start out now if we're going to talk about innovation and things that are different let's look at this uh amp to begin with okay this is not a vacuum tube even though it looks like a vacuum tube this is a class d gan device inside a vacuum tube for a complete this is a breakthrough design okay this is from alberto guerra of um he's from italy and he lives in california and these designs are made in the united states and this is an innovation okay this is not just like everybody else's amplifier this man innovates this company innovates agd productions hold on a second let me show you the rolling so first thing we do is we pull this top plate off um now listen to when can you hear that okay yeah because this is quarter inch plate Aluminum. This is not some cheap ass stamped metal lid. This is plate aluminum. Okay, this whole now you can see these heat sinks are made out of the chassis. So this is one block. This is not a face panel. You see those uh, screws there, those bolts? 
those bolts bolt these metal extrusions onto the outside of this chassis, which as you can see is bent sheet metal. Okay, this rear plate is bent sheet metal that's just bolted on. We go up to the front, we see a front panel. See those uh, nuts on the back there? So this is just a piece of sheet metal that is, uh, or plate rather, that's plate aluminum that is bolted onto the sheet metal bent chassis, which is made out of bent sheet steel out of a thick, pretty thick gauge, but it's still bent sheet steel, as you can see. And this is typically how amps are put together. They're just bolted together pieces of sheet steel. And that's really um, easy type design. Nothing like the Roland milled out of solid aluminum. This is one giant block of aluminum that is completely milled out. We have on the top, we have the amplifier section right here, um, which you can see. And it's milled halfway down, and on the bottom, it's milled halfway up for the power supply, which means it separates the power supply completely from the amplifier. The power supply remains in its own cavity on the underside of this amplifier. This is an innovation from Jeff Rowland. If you see it used anywhere else, it's because they copied Jeff Rowland. He's the one that innovated that putting separate upside down power supply into the same chassis. Okay, I've seen cheap versions where they make it out of stamp metal and then they put a stamp metal piece in between and they bolt it and they try and separate it. It's a cheap way to copy a dual chassis where you mill out both sides. This is the only way to really do it the way um, Jeff Rowland does here in the United States. So this is the heat sink right here. You see the left channel right here, the right channel over there. They bolt directly to the chassis. The chassis is the heat sink. This also makes contact with the inside lid where it is, uh, where the lid works as a heat sink as well. And you can see Jeff was so nice to sign this. Mike, enjoy the music. Jeff Rowland. This is when I bought the amps, December 2018. And I've got a matching pair that I bought back then. And I've never taken them out. So um, that ought to tell you something. If I was really just a normal dealer, these would never still be in my hands. I would just get rid of them. But I sell what I use and I use what I sell. And I sell nothing that I wouldn't use, nothing that I don't use. So here we go. We can see the inputs they come in. These are giant bus bars like you saw in the Corel. These are the bus bars that bring the, the rail voltage out to the output devices. We've got input. Um, if you're worried about Oh, do we need to worry about the input impedance of the preamp and all that stuff? No, not with Jeff Rowland's design because there's a Class A input stage. Lundahl transformers made in Sweden. That means the inputs are transformer coupled, which renders input impedance null. It doesn't matter. These take care of that, okay? Um, not many people do that. I have seen it copied, but this is a Jeff Rowland design as well. This is a Jeff Rowland feature. Anybody doing it now in their amplifiers from uh, with these type of little Lundahls? Just like this, that's a copy of Jeff Rowland, okay? And then on the bottom, we have a power supply. We don't even have a transformer because this amp is so advanced, it uses a high enough of a caliber switching mode power supply. It has it in the bottom. If I showed you that thing, you could definitely weld with that puppy too. But there is not the same necessary um, as the old school, big old transformer and big old filter caps. It's just not necessary in an amp that is made with innovative technology the way that the 625S2 is. This is a lifetime amp. This is a, 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 a heirloom quality that you can keep for several lifetimes. Your, hand it down to your kids. Um, anyways, so I just wanted to take that the time here real quick to show you some differences in amplifier design and show you how there's a difference between something that is innovative and advanced versus something that is old, like the Krell. The old, this, even though it's old, it's a very good design. It sounds killer. But it's old, so it should be the price of the old one. There's no premium that should be for the old Krell-type designs. When you have a new amp that uses the same technology as those old ones, there's no cost for R&D that you need to amortize into the cost of the amplifier like you do with something like this. This is way beyond the Krell, like light years beyond that Krell. Um, and, and it will probably last much longer. Um, so it's just a, a way to show you here the difference of these two and how things are built so you guys can pay attention and know the difference and don't think that just because something has a high price tag and, and it has the old technology like that old Krell that it's worth its high price tag. This is worth a premium. As you can tell, it looks a lot different than the old school tech because it's not old school tech. Um, and, and I wanted to take that a, a second now just to show you guys a little bit more in depth what goes on inside this stuff. 
I know this stuff and have known it for 20 years. I own an amp company that made amps in California. So I forget that you guys don't know really what goes on inside the amps. You don't know how to tell. So I'm taking a little time to teach you guys and show you the insides of amps so you can see the difference. That right there, okay, that's old school technology, okay? this See those transformers <laughs> in the back there? Those are even twice as big as the Krell, okay? That tube right there is a single-ended triode. That's a single-ended triode with 120 watts output, okay? That is old school design back there, but that is something that no other amplifier on the planet has 120 watts coming from a single uh, SET tube, just one, okay? I'll get into single SET and why that is the creme de la creme of tube amps, which are for fun, in my opinion. They're not all business like this is. This is business, okay? This is fun, okay? This is Frankenstein's lab. Sounds great. You put it with some nice, efficient speakers. Even though it's got 120 watts, it can drive most anything. You put it with something efficient, and it's just magic. It controls them like no tomorrow. Um and uh, anyways, so I deal in the exotic, unique circuits. I deal with and I sell things that are advanced technology. I do not uh, sell things that cost 20000 and above that are just rehashed Krell, um, you know, and trying to trying to fool people into thinking that they're new technolo 